Today we're going to learn how to create a pixel portrait. The goal of this lesson is to transform a normal photograph into something that looks like an old school 16-bit video game. Before we get started, we'll need to choose an image. You can use your own photograph or one that you've downloaded from the web. No matter what image you choose, just make sure the subject is facing forward. Profiles won't work with this method. Now that we have our image, let's open Photoshop. Drag and drop your image into the Photoshop work area. Now, let's crop our image. Select the Crop Tool. In the Crop Tool submenu, change Crop Type to Width Height Resolution. In the Width and Height fields, enter the value 500 pixels. In the Resolution field, enter the value 50 pixels per inch. Press Enter to crop. Now, let's delete the background of our image. There are many ways to delete the background of an image. We'll be using the Quick Selection tool. Choose the Quick Selection tool. Make sure to choose the Add to Selection option in the Tool submenu. Select your subject by clicking and dragging with the Quick Selection tool. Be careful not to select the background. You can correct any mistakes you make by choosing the Subtract from Selection option in the Tool submenu. Once you're happy with your selection, cut and paste it to a new layer by pressing Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC. With our new layer selected, we'll add a black outline to our subject by clicking on the Effects menu at the bottom of the Layers window and choosing Stroke. In the Stroke dialog box, we'll change the size of the stroke to 5 pixels and the color to black. Now, we'll merge the effect with the layer by right-clicking on the layer and choosing Convert to Smart Object. Now we'll add our pixelation effect by heading over to Filter, Pixelate, and selecting Mosaic. In our Mosaic dialog box, we'll enter a value of 10 into the field marked Cell Size. Next, we'll need to delete some of the transparent cells around our subject. These extra cells will only get in the way later. Head over to Select and choose Color Range. In the Color Range dialog box, choose Highlights. Change the fuzziness to 1 and Range to a value between 5 and 10. With our subject selected, we'll once again cut and paste it to a new layer by pressing Command or Control J. At this point, you may have noticed that some of our subject's features have disappeared when we applied the pixelation effect. We'll need to draw those back in manually. In order to be precise, first we'll need to create a guide layout over our image. Head over to View and select Create New Guide Layout. In both the column and row fields, enter a value of 50. Make sure the gutter fields are left blank. Now that we've made a grid, it's time to draw in our subject's missing features. First, we'll locate our subject's pupils by making the non-pixelated layer visible. This will make it a lot easier to see the pupils. Once we've located our subject's pupils, We'll select the Marquee tool and choose the Add to Selection option in the Tools submenu. Next, by clicking and dragging, we'll select the cells where our subject's pupils are located. Once we have our pupils selected, we'll choose the Paint Bucket tool and fill them in using black. Now, using the same method, we'll select the area around our subject's pupils and fill that in with white. This area will serve as the white part of our subject's eyes. My subject has glasses, so now, using the same method, I'll fill in the left side of his glasses. Once 
Once I have the left side filled in, I'll copy the selected area by going to Edit, Copy, and then Paste it by going to Edit, Paste. Now, I'll flip my pasted image by heading over to Edit, Transform, and selecting Flip Horizontal. Now, I'll drag the right side of the glasses over and merge the two layers together to complete my subject's glasses. Next, we'll locate our subject's mouth and create solid colors for both the top and bottom portions of his lips. Select the top lip and sample a color using the eyedropper tool. Switching to the paint bucket tool, we'll fill the color back in. You can repeat this process for the bottom lip. We can also give our subject teeth by selecting the area and filling it in with white. We can check our work by pressing Command or Control H, which will temporarily hide our guide layout. To unhide the guide layout, we simply press Command or Control H again. Now that we're finished drawing in our subject's missing features, let's add another black outline. Using the same Select and Fill technique, we'll select cells around our subject to create the outline. Make sure to select any cells that look transparent. They'll be covered over with black. When we're finished selecting the cells around our subject, we'll fill them in with our paint bucket tool to complete the outline. Now our project is almost complete. Let's add some finishing touches. First, we'll make a colorful background by using the gradient tool. Make a new layer and place it beneath your subject. Choose the Gradient tool and select two colors that complement your subject. Click and drag in any direction to create the gradient. Now, let's work on the appearance of our subject to make him look a little more like a 16-bit video game. First, we'll head over to Image, Adjustments, and select Levels. We'll adjust the three handles under the histogram that control shadows, midtones, and highlights. Our goal here is to improve the overall quality of our image. Next, under Image Adjustments, choose Vibrance. Here we can adjust how colorful our subject looks. I like to increase the color quite a bit, as most old school video games are pretty colorful. Finally, we'll head back to Image Adjustments and select Hue and Saturation. 
Here we can further adjust our color saturation and additionally alter the overall hue of our subject. And now we're done. We can merge our new layers together and check our work by comparing our original image with the altered one. Thanks so much for following along.